Okay. Um, may I request everyone to please turn on your camera before we have our opening prayer? Okay. Jami, where are you? Sir, pa uwi pa lang po. Hoy, Archie, nakasando ka. Archie, nakasando ka ba? Nakasando ka, Archie? Sir? Nakasando ka? Hi, sir. No po. Nakala ko nakasando ka. Okay, sige. So please turn on your camera then. Archie, Ira, Dario, Cindy, Bert, Erika. Okay, and uh, because I miss listening to the voice of um, the voice of Norbert, may we request Norbert to lead us at the opening prayer. Norbert, please. Classmates, let us pray. Let us put the Holy Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us put ourselves to the Holy Presence, the Lord. Lord, uh, thank you for this day. Thank you for the ways which you provide for us all, for your protection and love. We thank you. Help us to focus our hearts and minds not on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we listen attentively to the inputs of our teacher. Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. This we ask Jesus' name, King. Amen. Okay, good afternoon. And uh, thank you for responding to uh, the learning task you did the other day, that was yesterday. And I think uh, all teams, okay, all teams were able to submit their output for uh, test construction, particularly a multiple choice test, um, true false test, or forced choice test. And the other one is the completion uh, type of test. Okay, allow me to allow me to um, allow me to explain this to you because in the reference that we are using, um, the um, uh, the the true false test is still termed as true false test, but uh, and even the completion type and the matching type of test are still termed as such. Okay, uh, because when we had our training. Uh, a training, uh, a training in the university, and uh, our speaker on assessment was uh, a professor from the University of Santo Tomas. He clarified that we're not supposed to term, we are not supposed to use the term as matching type, uh, completion type, or true false test. Okay, when we are to classify the different types of paper and pencil test, because he said. The name is not actually the, 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 the name of the set test or the set types of test is not, uh, are not, uh, is not actually a name for an assessment, but rather a direction already of how the test is supposed to be taken. Because if you would say completion type, then that would mean that you just have to complete a certain statement or a certain sentence. When you say matching type, you, you just need to match an item to another item. When you say uh, true false, then you just have to identify whether this statement is true or false. That's why the term forced choice, okay, uh, can also is a better term to call a true false test. Okay, it's a better term to call a true false test. So it's called forced choice test. What makes it a forced choice? Because you just have to select from binary options, from two options, whether the statement is true or the statement is false, just that. So it's called forced choice test. And forced choice test, okay, has two types. The first type is what we call as the alternative response, merely identifying, you just have to merely identify whether it's a statement or a, a statement is true or false, just that. Or whether you agree or disagree to a statement. That's what we mean by alternative response. Then the other type is, uh, we have the other type of test, uh, the other type of first choice test is what we call as um, structured response. 
structured because there are conditions that the examinee should consider before deciding on the answer to a certain test item. So for example, for example of conditions, write A if the first statement is true and the second statement is false. Write B if the first statement is false and the second statement is true. Write C if both statements are true and write D if both statements are false. These are the conditions. And the conditions structure the item. That's why it's called structured, uh, structured response. Then there's also what we call as, uh, the other type is uh, structured response parincha, but the other directions for structured response would be this. Examine the following statements. If the statement is true, then write T. If the statement is true, then write the complete word true. If the statement is false, underline the word or phrase that makes it false and replace it with something that would make the statement true. So that's another type of structured response. What is the condition? That you have to underline, okay, that you have to underline the word that makes the statement true and that makes the statement false and you have to replace that word, okay, to make the statement true, okay? So that's, that's an example of a condition. Then, of course, the completion test and the matching type test Okay, or unfinished sentence, ang tinatawagan sa completion, ito daw ay hindi dapat tawagin as such. But they are supposed to be termed as simple recall. Why simple recall? Because matching test, matching type of test and completion type of test would merely require students to, to would, merely uh, would merely check students' uh, remembering skill as regards a certain concept or a certain theory discussed in class. So yun lang daw ang purpose ng matching type and completion type. Kaya nga kung meron mga kind of test that would, if you would like to, to check students' uh, students uh, remembering skills, then better to make use of completion type or matching type of test. Kaya kung makikita nyo sa matching type, usually homogenous yung mga nasa columns because it would merely require students to check or to gauge their remembering skills or their memory or route memory. Or route memory. Okay, just that. Okay, now. We're done with the first three types of uh, tests. Now we proceed to the subjective types of tests. Okay. And we said that there are, there are uh, the subjective types of tests will include, okay, essay test types. And that is what we are to examine in today's discussion. We are to examine how to construct, okay, how to construct test items using the essay forms of tests or essay types of tests. Okay. So any more questions as regards your experience yesterday of uh, doing the task or doing the worksheet? Was it easy for you to construct the test items? Which of those three test item, uh, test types do you think is the easiest to construct? Very young, true or false. True or false, sir. Okay, true, false, okay, or false choice test. Okay. How about multiple choice? Multiple choice also, sir. Mahirap o madali? Okay naman siya, sir. Okay naman siya. Okay. Okay, siya. Okay. Uh, okay siya if you mastered the guidelines, no? If you already have mastered the guidelines, it's easy to, it is really very easy to craft, okay, questions or test items on these different test types. Okay? Now, we proceed. But the issues, okay, ang, pinakama, ang pinakamadali daw na gawin, na klase ng test ay yung essay test. Madaling i-prepare ang essay test. Kaya sinasabi natin na ang essay test, ang essay test ay mas, uh, ang sanaysay sa Filipino, ang sanaysay ay mas madaling gawin okay, kumpara dun sa mga objective test types. Bakit? Kasi dalawang iisipin mo dun sa objective test types. Ano yung isipin mo? Yung alternatives and at the same time yung question mismo, yung stem mismo. But for, the, but for the essay questions, you just have to think of the item. You just have to think of the question itself. No need for you to provide options. Okay? Kaya nga mas madaling gawin si essay test kumpara sa objective type. O kumpara sa mga objective types of test. Okay? But the only problem later we will, we will understand that. The only, the, the, only thing about, the only thing about objective test type is madali siyang i-check. Okay? Madali siyang i-check. Unlike sa essay test na it would really require you enough time or adequate time or longer time for you to be able to check the, the responses of your learners. And it's not, just, it's not easy to score 
okay, any essay types of responses. Okay, now allow me to share my screen for the presentation para pwede na kayo mag-open yung camera. Basta huwag niyo akong tulugan, okay? Okay. So we now proceed to constructing essay tests. Please take note that um, please take note that this the original presentation okay was created by Saibel Gunay from Ministry of Education of Turkey and I modified some contents and I modified the slide design. So we proceed now to our discussion on constructing essay tests. Look at this icon or this picture. Harriet was still in the middle of her essay. Okay, that's that's a that's a uh, a literal interpretation of the text. Harriet was still in the middle of her essay, uh, When 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 we when we ask our students to complete an essay test, it's really difficult for us to. Uh, it's really uh, it's more likely that we are going to extend the time. Okay, when they are asked to write, uh, when they are, are asked to complete an essay test. Because sabi nga natin, one of the things that we have to consider when we are going to make use of the essay test, one of the challenges, should I say, that students might encounter, that we might encounter when we are to prepare essay test, is the consideration that not all our students are good at writing. Okay, minsan talaga mahirap magsimula magsulat ng isang sanaysay, lalo na kung, lalo na kung napakalalim ng tanong doon sa uh, sanaysay o doon sa essay. Um... Barbara Gross Davis, okay, in his book Tools for Teaching, ang essay matagal ng type of test ito since uh, time immemorial. He said or she said that essay tests let students display their overall understanding of a topic and demonstrate their ability to think critically, organize their thoughts, and be creative and original. Babalikan natin later, babalikan natin maya-maya ang 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 ato, ang passage na ito ang sinasabi nitong ni Barbara because uh, this statement is actually the big statement of our lesson for today it actually summarizes everything that we will we will discuss about constructing essay tests okay you take note of the big words in this passage okay it says overall understanding of a topic ability to think critically uh, organizing their thoughts being creative and being original when it comes to students' response or students' responses to a certain test item. Now, take note that an essay question is a test item that contains uh, four elements. So an essay question contains four elements. First, essay questions requires or essay question requires examinees to compose rather than select their response. That's true. Kaya nga tinawag natin subjective type of test. Unlike sa objective type of test, that there are alternatives, that there are set of alternatives or set of options that we have to refer where we can draw our answer to such question. Unlike for essay, no alternatives, okay, no options, okay, examinees or students or learners are really required to compose their answer to a test item or to a question. Second element, it elicits student responses that consist of one or more sentences. Okay, there would be one or more sentences. Okay, that students have to create, that examinees or learners have to create, have to write, so that they could be able to provide an answer to a question or to a test item. Okay. The third one, no single response or single response pattern is correct. Okay. Kaya makikita mo, mahalata mo kaagad-agad kung nangopya ang estudyante o kung kinopya lamang ng estudyante yung kanyang kasagutan sa isang sanaysay. Dahil kung halos parehas lamang, halos parehas lamang ang sagot ng isang estudyante doon sa sa isang estudyante, doon malamang nagkopyahan yung nasabi ng mga estudyante. You know, uh, cheating has been an issue, okay, particularly when we ask our students to uh, to do a reflection paper or essay question because sometimes students would just lift, okay? 
the students would just lift an answer from the internet or from a certain uh, electronic resource from a certain website, then minsan they would just have to rephrase or paraphrase the statement they have lifted and taught off from a certain website. Kasi marami na rin mga tools na yon na kung high-tech ang kung high-tech na ang education ngayon with the use of the internet, cheating is also becoming high-tech. But you know, if there's one thing that you have to learn from that, no matter how high-tech cheating is, I hope that you are not going to involve yourself into it. Why? Because you are just going to fool yourself. You're pretending to be intelligent, but you're not intelligent. Okay, you're, you're pretending that you did something, but actually you did not do it, but you just have lifted it from a certain reference. Okay, that would only mean that if you cheat, that would only mean that you don't trust yourself. You don't trust your ability. Well, in fact, everyone is given that ability by God. Okay, we are given, uh, we are given, uh, we are given an adequate ability. We're given that rationality because we, because, because uh, we can, we can, uh, we can actually learn by ourselves. We can actually, we, we, we actually have the skills to learn by ourselves or to learn, uh, to learn using our own skill and our abilities. And number four, the accuracy and the quality of students' responses to essays must be judged subjectively by a competent specialist in the subject. This is sabi natin. Even if we are going to make use of a scoring tool or scoring rubric to assess or to assign score to a student's uh, essay or a student's uh, um, written outputs in essays, okay, there would always be subjectivity when it comes to checking their responses. Okay, later on, we will be, we will be discussing about uh, the limitations, the advantages of using essay test types okay, as a form of assessment or as a type of assessment. So these are the four elements of an essay question. And there are two types of essay test. We have the extended responses and restricted responses. We call it extended response because uh, it promotes synthesis and evaluation levels of the levels of cognitive complexity. Because students have a lot of freedom in answering the question. So, meaning to say, meaning to say, ang mga estudyante ay free na kung ilang sentences, ilang paragraph ang pwede nilang isagot sa nasabing katanungan. So that that makes it uh, that, that makes it uh, called uh, that, that is why it's being called as extended response. No limitations, no limits for students. Uh, whatever response will they will they be giving to a certain test item or essay test item. Then we also have the restricted response. Uh, there's more consistency in scoring. Okay, outlines parameters of responses. If there is a rubric being provided by the teacher, okay, for him or her to assess or assign score to an essay test, then that makes an essay test a restricted type of test. And it outlines parameters of responses. Meaning to say there are conditions, okay, that students have that students have to consider when they are going to write their response or when they are going to write their essay as regards a certain question or as regards a certain test item. So these are the two forms, extended response and restricted response. If there are limits when it comes to number of words, sentences, uh, and others, there's a rubric. These are all examples of restricted response type of essay. Extended response and restricted response. Okay, so we pause for a while. We entertain now. Um, we now entertain uh, questions from the class. Please take note that um, we will no longer be recording the the sharing. Okay, walang points na ito. Uh, but I hope that you will still ask for clarificatory questions so that um, uh, so that uh, things would be made clear, made clearer before we proceed to the next part of our discussion. Yes, Cindy. Sure. Turn on the camera, please. Okay, we are having the open forum, so please turn on your camera. We have Cindy first, and after Cindy is PJ, then after PJ is Jerry. Okay, may I request everyone to please turn on your camera. Sir, ask ko lang po if an anong what year level po applicable ang essay test? What year level? Parang anong year level siya nang start, sir? Wala namang ano, wala namang prescription kung anong year level pwede magpa-essay test. Okay, wala namang prescription. Pwede siya actually sa elementary grades, uh, high, school, high school, and even college.
But of course, nakadepende dun sa level, dun sa lalim ng tatanong mo. Nakadepende din sa quality ng mga tanong mo. Siyempre, kapag gagawa ka ng, uh, ng, ng pagsagot sa mga mga mag-aaral sa elementarya, siyempre, simplihan mo lang din yung tanong mo. Nakadepende dun sa edad nila at nakadepende dun sa pag-unawa nila. Okay, siyempre, kapag graduate school naman ang mga sudyante mo, siyempre, papahirapan mo yung mga tanong, lalaliman mo yung tanong. Okay, so nakadepende yan dun sa... Uh, doon sa depth of analysis that would uh, depth of analysis that will be required of the learners when they are going to answer the essay test item or essay question. That's a good question, Cindy. Yes, PJ. Um, sir, the boy you mentioned earlier regarding the objective that that's um when teachers uh, already have an answer, the buzzer. The kapag so. In essay, sir, di ba, since this is an um, self-expression, that's why parang nahihirapan yung teachers mag-check, tama, sir? Um, my question po here is that when using type, um, essay type of test, uh, is there any more disadvantage po? Yeah, later on we will be discussing the disadvantages of essay test types. Okay, uh, th okay, that will be part of, I think that's last uh, last part or second to the last part of our presentation today about the limitations or disadvantages okay, sure. of using uh, of using essay test types. Though initially we, we, we already have mentioned that one of the disadvantages is um, it's difficult to score. It's difficult to assign a score to an essay response. That's, I think that's one of the disadvantages. And second also is uh, it would take a longer time. Okay, it would take longer time to check Okay, students answer to an essay question. Then another disadvantage, I think, is um, it cannot cover all the content, all the content of the lesson or all the lessons discussed in class. Hindi niya kaya. Unlike objective test type na pwede niya i-cover lahat ng natalakay sa klase, pero ang essay kasi, ito yung sinasabi ng pinagkaiba nilang dalawa. Si, ano, si, si, si objective test type, pwede siya sa depth and breadth of learning. Pero itong CSA, usually depth of learning lang ang pinopromote niya. Okay? Pag yun sa essay, sa subjective kasi, halos lahat ng content pwede mong, ano, pwede mong madali o pwede mong makover when you're going to make use of objective test type uh, in, in testing or in measuring students' understanding. Pero sa essay, talagang hindi makocover lahat. Pero it's really more authentic than the objective test types. Okay, because students are given the opportunity to share their original idea as regards their understanding of certain content. Okay, so that's it. Now we proceed to Jire. Sir, kapag po ba nagpa-require ng intro, body, and conclusion, meaning restricted response po? Yes, that's restricted. Okay, kapag meron kang conditions, parang ito yung pinag pinag pinagkatulad niya doon sa structured response. If there are conditions in essay, then it makes uh, it is a restricted type of test. Kapag free flowing lang siya, na nagtanong ka, bahala na si estudyante kung anong gagawin niya, tapos wala pang rubric, that is uh, what we call as ex uh, extended type of uh, extended type of uh, essay. Yeah, that's a good clarification. Diba usually sa English kasi you're teaching them how to write properly, no? So kailangan merong thesis statement or topic sentence. Ang tawag yan is topic sentence in first part eh. Topic sentence or thesis statement. Tama ba ako? Then the, sec then the second part, the middle part is the body or the supporting details as regards your thesis, as regards your topic sentence. And the last one is concluding statement or concluding paragraph to sum up everything that you have said okay, as a conclusion. Okay, usually, yan yung three parts of an essay. But if you are very particular with the three parts of essay, then that makes it a restricted type of essay. Okay, thank you, Jire. And we welcome Jami. Um, sir, clear ko lang po kasi medyo hindi ko na hinig yung sa restricted response. Pag po ba may kunyari sir and essay tapos po may rubric that's considered as restricted response yes. po kahit walang uh, limit yung sa sentences niya po? Yeah, that's, that's true. If there's, a, if there's a rubric and there's a, and, and, and particularly if the rubric clearly explain, okay, the requirements of the supposed response of the student to, a, to an essay test, then that will also make it a restricted essay. Or restricted Thank you, essay. sir. Yes. Okay. And then we welcome uh, Lori. Lori raised, raised, raised her hand a while back. Lori? Not her hand, the icon. 
Okay, yes, Lori. Jami, pwede, pwede mo na ibaba yung kamay mo. Okay, baka mapagod ka. Okay, Lori. Lori, hindi ka namin naririnig. Sir, naririnig niyo na po ako. Hindi ko po kasi marinig kapag wala akong earphone, sir. Ay, naririnig ka na namin. Naririnig mo na ako? Sir. Sir, wait lang. Wait lang. <laughs> sige, sige. Pag naka-earphone ka, hindi ka namin naririnig. Okay na? Sir, sir, sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Uh, naririnig niyo na po ako? Yes, yes. Sir, uh, ano? Um, when should an essay test administered to students po? When Mandate. Should, when should essay test be administered to students? Yes, sir. Option mo yan bilang teacher. It's a decision that every teacher should do, di ba? It's a decision. For example, uh, should I make use of essay uh, for this kind of learning outcome? Nakaangkla lagi dati yan sa learning outcome natin, tama? Nakaangkla, kaya nga we are doing the table of specification or even, the, or even considering the learning outcome when we are going to prepare the test types that we are doing. Because uh, the learning outcome would dictate to us what appropriate, okay, what appropriate, um, uh, assessment type or assessment type of test should we ask our learners complete. Okay, for example, uh, in English, for example, one of the macro skills that you need to develop among among your students is their skill to write. So, dapat merong pagkakataon sa mga estudyante na makapagsulat sila na isang sanaysay. Pati na rin sa Filipino, kung magtuturo mo yung Filipino, kung isa sa malalaking, malalaking kakayanan, na kaila, kakayahan na kailangan mong turo sa mga estudyante mo, ay yung kanilang kakayahan o abilidad na magsulat ng sanaysay, eh di dapat meron ka mga assessment, okay? Meron ka assessment when it, uh, na natungkol sa essay. Okay? Uh, kaya nga yung mga, yung mga, yung mga, uh, yung mga, pero ngayon kasi ang writing kasi, it's already considered as a life skill eh. Bakit siya life skill? Kasi you need your right you you need to to be skillful of writing kasi when you're going to to be at work kapag professional na kayo kapag nagwo-work na kayo you already required to do communications to do like this and like that and others nagiging life skill na rin kasi si writing. So lahat ng subjects actually pwede ang essay. Lalo na ko ang kung, kung gusto mo makita ang kalaliman ng pag-unawa ng estudyante doon sa nasabing nilalaman ng pagtatuto. So, ulitin ko, no, uh, Lori, nakadepende iyan doon sa estratehiya mo bilang guro at syempre nakadepende rin doon sa learning outcomes na identify mo doon sa lesson mo. Okay? Kung akma si essay to meet, to achieve that learning outcome, then make use of the essay. Pero kung mas akma si objective type of test, then make use of the objective types of test. Okay? Nakadepende yan sa konteksto ng klase mo. Okay? Siguro alas 12 na sa lugar ni Erika. Erika, alas 12 na ba ng gabi dyan? Erika, is it 12 midnight there in your place already? Okay, yeah. Jella, we listen to Jella. Kasi si Jella kaya alim na alim na, na ngumingiti. Okay, sige. Jella, any question natin? Sir, uh, sabi natin essay is subjective. So, mm -hmm. sir, ano apag... sir, naglalag po kasi ako. Alas 12 na ba dyan sa inyo? Sir. Alas 12 na ba dyan? Sir, sir, eh, ma'am. Okay, sige. Alam mo kung nakaputi ka, mukha ka ng multo dyan. Okay, sige. Jela, jela, sige. Sir, litin ko na lang po. Ah, uh, sabi natin... <laughs> Okay, sige, sige. Oh, Jella, sige, ikaw na, Jella. 
sir, sabi po natin kanina is essay is subjective type. So as a teacher or as a student, meron po bang uh, pagkakataon na nagiging bias yung paggrade doon sa essay, essay ng estudyante? Kung meron po, sir, uh, ano po yung mga factors nakaka-apekto dun sa bias, sir? Okay. Whether, whether we like it or not, Okay, even if we are going to make use of rubrics to restrict the response of our students when it comes to essay test, there would always be uh, there would always be a bias or subjectivity when teachers are assigning scores to, to an essay test uh, to an essay test. Saan nagagaling yung bias? Una, okay. Kapag mapalarecite yung bata sa klase, okay? Minsan ang magiging tendency ng teacher, okay, ay palarecite ito, siguro maganda ang resp- maganda ang sagot nito. Okay, minsan pa nga may mga, lalo na, sa, lalo na kapag ano, lalo na kapag walang rubric na ginagamit. Okay, lalo na pag walang rubric yung ginagamit o pag extended lang siya. Tapos sabihin ng teacher, ito yung lagi nagre-recite sa klase. Para nang sa ganun, mabawasan yung time niya to check the paper, ah, bigyan ko na lang ng score. Bigyan ko na mataas na score. Okay, kasi lagi naman nagre-recite sa klase. Okay, do, do, doon nang gagaling isa sa mga factors na kinoconsider ng teacher kapag nag-check siya ng essay. Kasi it would really take time. That's a disadvantage of essay. It would really, it would really take time for teachers to, to, to check the responses of the learners. Lalo na kapag extended, yung hindi walang restriction. Nako, ang haba-haba, minsan mga sagot, ganyan-ganyan. So si teacher naman, sabi niya, ay, masyadong mahaba yung sagot niya. Ah, okay na to. Okay, that's subjectivity again. Okay, masyadong mahaba yung sagot niya. Tapos nakikita ko, nagre-recite lagi sa class. Certainly, perfect na tong essay niya. Okay? Yun naman ang gagaling. Another is, uh, another na tinagagalingan ng subjectivity ng teacher ay yung halimbawa, yung ano, halimbawa, yung yung estudyante ang may pinakamataas na prelim grade, halimbawa. Okay? Ah, sure na ako, ano, okay to. Lalo na kapag meron na siyang, meron na siyang background, meron siyang background about the student. For example, former student niya, tapos nakita niyo yung kakayanan ng estudyante ito. So certainly, kapag mo-check na lang siya ng essay at para makabawas sa oras niya to, to, to score the essay, eh, bibigyan na lang niya yung score ng bata. So that's subjectivity. Later on, we will try to, to identify, I think last part of the presentation, we will identify the different uh, biases okay, that teachers may have in checking the essay responses of the learners. And how to lessen it. Sabi nga natin, whether we like it or not, kahit pa sabi natin restricted or extended, there would always be subjectivity or bias of a teacher when checking the essay responses. To reduce it, kailangan natin i-restrict. To reduce it, kailangan natin ng rubric, ng scoring guide. Okay? Kaya ang sabi natin, no, when we are going to check, uh, when we are going to check essay responses of our students, we are making use both types of measurement. The norm reference and the criterion reference. Malala niyo pa yung pinagkaiba ng dalawa? The norm reference is, you are going to compare the response of the student to the response of the other student. Okay? The criterion reference is we make use of a set of criteria to assign a score to a student's output, to a student's essay write-up. Okay? So later on, Jela, titignan natin yung mga ito and how to address them. I think the, the, the last few parts of the presentation. But that's a good question. Okay? So, yun yung sabi natin na uh, kaya kailangan talaga na to reduce the subjectivity uh, you really have to be skillful also of preparing a rubric, a scoring rubric, okay, in checking essay tests. Okay, so we now continue our presentation. We now proceed to guidelines, okay, for constructing essay questions. First, we have to clearly define the intended learning outcome to be assessed by the item. So if we are going to prepare an essay test, then we have to make sure that a certain learning outcome, okay, is really addressed by the said type of test. Okay? Siguro kung merong, 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 ano, merong, merong isang napakahalagang konsepto, o napakahalagang nilalamang pagkatuto sa inyong kalakayan na gusto mong makakuha ng malalimang pag-unawa o malalimang pagpapaliwanag mula sa mga sudyante, gagamit ka ng essay. 
At kung wala kang ibang paraan para ma-convert ito sa objective test type, gumamit ka na lang ng essay. So, make sure, ito yung sabi natin, ito yung sabi natin instructional alignment. Okay? That learning outcomes should be our basis. Okay? In writing or in I'm making use of essay types of tests for our students. Then second, we define the task and shape the problem situation. We have to be very clear of what we are asking our students do when we're going to craft our essay test questions, our essay test items. Dapat klaro tayo. Okay? Ano ba yung nais kong ipagawa sa kanila? Should they have to provide examples when they are going to explain their opinion or explain their answer to this question? Should I have to ask them provide a clear situation, a clear real-life situation explaining their stance as regards the issue that is being explored, and others? Number three, specify the relative point value and the approximate time limit in clear directions. How many minutes should they have? For example, if you are going to require them to answer the essay question, okay, uh, the essay question in a certain duration of time, then you have to specify that, okay. And if if there's a way, if there's if there's a need that you have to differentiate the points that you would that you would allot to each type of to each of your essay questions, then you have to specify that, okay. How many points would this be? How many points would this would would be, would would this be also, okay? But please take note that when you're going to specify the to specify the jury, uh, the the time limit, for example, okay, the time limit of uh, answering the essay question, then that is a restricted response. Pero if you're going to if you're going to specify the points, okay, hindi siya hindi uh, pwede siyang restricted, pwede rin siyang uh, extended, okay. So, kapag yung point system lang naman ang binago mo, okay, pwede siyang restricted response, pwede rin siyang extended response. Pero kapag time, merong time limit, then that would automatically be a restricted type of essay. Number four is state the criteria for grading. So, there has to be a criteria, okay, when we are going to do, uh, when we are going to do um, uh, essay test types. Please, wag kayong ano ha, wag kayong Wag kayong ano, wag kayong malito dito. Kapag rubric ang ibibigay mo doon, then certainly that is restricted. Pero kapag criteria lang ang pinrovide mo, for example, set of criteria lang, uh, sabi mo content, grammar, ganun lang, tapos may point system, then that can still be, that is an example of extended, uh, extended, ano, extended, um, kapag, kapag ang, ang ano mo lang is content, tapos merong point system, tapos merong uh, grammar, for example, merong point, allotted points, tapos wala ka nang sinabi pa doon sa ilang words dapat, ilang sentences dapat, kompleto ba dapat ang parts ng isang essay and others. Pag wala ka sinabi na maganon, then still the type of essay is extended. Okay? Pero kapag rubric ang pinorovide mo, then that would mean that the essay is restricted. Number five, use short essay questions rather than one rather than the long ones. Okay? Short essay questions dapat. Okay, huwag niyo sobrang haba. Kasi pag sobrang haba at meron kang mga situations, that is no longer that is no longer an essay type of test. Yan na itiatawag nating uh, problem uh, problem based uh, test under subjective type of test. Problem based. Yung meron silang uh, case studies, mga ganyan. Uh, hindi na essay ang tawag dyan. Ang tawag dyan already ay case study or problem-based um, type of test. Number six, avoid the use of optional questions. Okay? What do you mean by optional questions? Yung sabi mo na, uh, please select one from the following essay questions to answer. Just one. Do not do that. Why? Because you are reducing the, you are reducing the, the reliability of the test item. Kaya nga sabi natin, di ba, Kapag essay question, kapag isang essay question lang yan, it will not cover everything that you have taught, okay, for for a whole period of time, for a whole period, for the whole uh, semester or for the whole grading period, okay? Kaya nga, uh, avoid asking, your, for example, na pa-essay ka, tapos sinabi mo na, uh, there, uh, below are five essay questions, just select one to answer. Then that will already be make your, that, that will make, should I say, that will make your essay type of test questionable already. 
uh, kaya sa dapat walang optional questions if you have if you have provided three questions three essay questions then that would mean that these three essay questions should be answered by the learners improve the essay question through preview and review so when you're going to write when you're going to construct an essay question you also have to uh, seek the assistance of your co-teachers or your or your or your colleagues whether uh, it's easily to it's it's understandable or not kasi minsan akala natin ang dali-dali ng essay natin pero hindi pala kauna-unawa sa mga estudyante so we have to check also we also have to check our colleagues we also have to seek assistance from our colleagues or from our co-teachers whether our essays are easy to be understood by them or not because if it's 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 not easy to be understood by them then that would mean that we need to rephrase it so there has to be preview and review of our essay questions at ulitin ko no pag essay question hindi ito pwedeng uh, hindi pwedeng itong hindi pwedeng, hindi ito pwedeng i-recycle okay hindi pwedeng i-recycle you really have to rephrase it when you're going to reuse it okay now any any question as regards the guidelines before we continue may may tanong kayo kung walang tanong uh, please make use of the please make use of uh, Pwede ba gumamit ng any icon dito? Wala. Hindi pwede, no? Ay, hindi pwede. Hindi pwede gumamit ng icon. Unlike sa Zoom na merong icon. Okay, sige. So, since walang ano, we continue. We now proceed to... Okay, we now proceed to the advantages of essay test. I thought there are four advantages. First, essay questions provide an effective way of assessing complex learning outcomes. So, sabi ko kanina, that if you would like your learners to provide an exploration or a deep, an in-depth, okay, an in-depth uh, explanation of their understanding as regards a certain uh, learning outcome or certain learning content, then we make use of essay types of essay type of test okay if you would like to assess complex learning outcomes so make sure that if i would ask you to complete kasi merong merong task uh, this coming week na kailangan yung completuhin make sure that your learning outcome there is something that is complex what do you mean by complex learning outcome if that outcome cannot be cannot be measured by merely, if the attainment of that outcome cannot merely uh, cannot cannot be measured by merely preparing an objective test type, then make use of an essay type of test. Okay, number two, essay questions allow students to demonstrate their reasoning, uh, because you would like to you would you would usually ask them to defend their answer, so you're going to require them demonstrate their reasoning skill in an essay type of test. Okay. For example, ang ano mo, balikan natin yung number one. Halimbawa, yung learning outcome mo ay, check natin, no? Halimbawa, ang learning outcome mo ay, uh, tingin ako ng sakro. Ano yung distro ba dito? Halimbawa, ang learning outcome mo, is to um, the students uh, at the uh, in this in this course or in this unit, the students are expected to are expected to uh, utilize, okay, utilize three uh, utilize three or uh, five or more references five or more references to to propose okay to propose to propose a mitigating a mitigating um uh to, to propose a mitigating uh, to propose uh, to propose a solution to propose a solution 
mitigating the effects of global warming. Okay? Mitigating the effects of global warming. That is a complex learning outcome. You cannot do that by merely providing a paper and pencil assessment or an objective type of assessment. Okay, so that's an example of a complex learning outcome. Ah, okay, so I make use of essay then because that is my learning outcome. My learning outcome is too complex. Okay, again, the learning outcome is in this core, in this unit of study, students are expected to utilize the five or more references to propose a solution mitigating effects or mitigating the effects of global warming. So that is a complex, okay? What makes it complex? The use, the utilization of five references. That makes it complex. So you, we cannot do that by, by, by merely, okay, by merely crafting an objective type of test. But an essay test is more appropriate for is the most of, is, is the appropriate type of test for students to be able to do or to be able to achieve such learning outcome so that's what we mean by complex learning outcomes number three essay questions provide authentic experience because constructed responses are closer to real life as essay allows students to demonstrate the ability to organize their knowledge to express their own opinion and to show originality that measures authenticity of a certain learning task of a certain assessment type why because when you are going to express your opinion that is a life skill that a student should learn expressing our opinions okay our skill to express our opinions are being used by us every day of our lives and that makes essay an authentic type of assessment showing the authentic, showing our uh, showing originality is also making uh, uh, will also make Okay, essay as an authentic type of assessment. Okay. Organizing our understanding, our knowledge is also a life skill. It's also a skill that we need every day of our lives because every day we do decisions. And every day we are asked to, uh, we are asked to express our ideas, express our take to a certain thing or to a certain issue. And we can only be able to communicate our stand to, to a certain matter if we know how to organize our knowledge, our understanding as regards it. So that makes essay questions or essay type of test more authentic than the objective types of test. Number four, essay discourages students to guess as it stimulates more study of the learning content. Okay, hindi sila mamuhula lamang. Kung makikita mo kung nanguhula ang estudyante kapag sumusulat ng sanaysay. Okay? Um, because they, they, they are discouraged to to do guessing game because they have to expound their answer to a certain question. Now, remember also that essay tests can evaluate more complex cognitive or thinking skills. Yung sinabi natin kanina, these cognitive challenges are reflected in the verbs of the question themselves. For example, knowledge. So pwede siya, no? Uh, define, for example, that can also be an essay. Comprehension. Describe, blah, blah, blah. Application. The, the, we can also ask an application essay question or essay item. Illustrate, for example, how learning outcomes, uh, illustrate how learning outcomes are crafted or how learning outcomes are written. Okay? Interpret, blah, 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 and others. So we can we can just ask them that. For example, um, how, o kapag sabi mong, uh, ang essay hindi lamang sinusulat in ano ha, Ang essay questions ay hindi lamang sinusulat in a interrogatory form or in direct question form. Pwede rin po siya na parang, uh, pwede rin po siyang, uh, pwede ka rin gumamit ng declarative uh, type of statement. For example, siya sabi ko kanina, illustrate, how, uh, apply, blah, 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 interpret. So we can also make use of all these terms. At pwede rin siya sa HATS or higher order thinking skills, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. Analyze, okay, design, evaluate, and others. So these objectives, okay, these verbs can be used when you are going to craft, when you are going to create an essay type of test or an essay test item in our respective uh, assessments. Now, what are the limitations? First, essay questions necessitate testing and limited sample of subject matter. Ito yung sabi ko na it's not appropriate 
essay type of test is not appropriate when you're, when you're targeting to measure all the learning content discussed in the class. Kaya questionable ang kanyang validity, ang kanyang content validity. Kasi hindi niya kaya i-cover lahat ang tinalakay sa klase. Essay questions have limitations in reliability as they are subjective and scoring is potential, potentially unreliable. So, ang, 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 ang scoring mo, okay, kung walang rubric, ay lalong questionable ang reliability ng nasabing essay responses ng estudyante. Kasi sinasabi nga natin na laging subjective ang scoring when it comes to essay questions. Number three, Essay questions are time-consuming to score as they require more time for scoring student responses. Tama yan. And lastly, essay questions provide practice in poor or unpolished writing. Kaya sasabi natin na kapag, kaya nga pag -essay, kapag, kapag gagawa tayo ng assessment, hindi lamang puro essay. Because not all our students are good at writing. Maliban kung ang measure mo ay yung kanilang writing skill. Okay. So, there are four step process in grading essay test items. Okay, paano mag-grade ngayon ng essay test items? Step one, when the assignment is given or when the essay test is given, first, you figure out the purpose of the assignment, yung learning outcome na tinutukoy ko dito. And of course, generate grading criteria based upon the purpose. So, ibig sabihin, dapat ang rubric mo o ang criteria mo, criteria for extended response, rubric for restricted response, ay dapat nakaangkla siya doon sa learning outcome. Ay maliwanag yun, okay? Nakaangkla dapat siya doon sa learning outcome because what we are going to measure is the achievement of the learning outcome. Hence, the rubric that we use to score or the criteria that we use to assign score to a certain essay test, to a certain response on essay item, has have to be based on the learning outcome the essay test type is intended, is intended, is intended for. Okay? Number two, share the criteria you decide upon with your students. So after, after developing the criteria, that has to be explained to your students. It's either you give them a copy or post it in the door of your classroom. Or you have to explain it to them, the criteria. Do not forget to explain the criteria. The next is provide models of your grading criteria to your students. What do you mean by models of grading criteria? Provide them an example essay. Okay, that's what we mean by exemplars. Okay, we cannot just tell them do this and do that, but we cannot show them an example, a perfect example for such matter. Okay, there has to be an exemplar, a learning exemplar to be provided to them before we ask them do or write their essay. Okay. Step two, when the assignments are turned in, so for example, nasagot na nila, what you can do are the following. Quickly overview a percentage of the papers to get an overall sense of how the group did on the assignment. So, pwede kang gumawa ng siguro sampung, sampung sagot, basahin mo ng konti, overview mo ng konti, para makita mo yung um, overall performance ng yung sudyante dun sa essay nila. Then after that, skim some papers that you feel are representative of the range of quality in the student work. So, tingin ka ng isa na babasahin muna and use these papers to start four piles. So, gawin mo four piles. Di ba, basahin mo yung sample. Okay. Ngayon, pwede kang, ano, ito yung sinasabi natin na paggamit ng ano na ito, paggamit na ng uh, norm reference measurement. Okay, norm reference measurement. So, nakapili ka limbawa ng sampung essay. Binasa mo yung mga papel na ito. Ngayon, nung nabasa mo na siya, na skim. Skim lang ha, hindi scanning. Okay, iba yan. What is skimming again? Ano ibig sabihin skimming? Anyone? Ano ibig sabihin ng skimming? Yung pasadahan mo lang, no? Ang pagbasa. Ngayon, after that, you use the sample papers which you have uh, which you have um, which you have uh, drawn from the group. Tapos identify mo sila into four, uh, you you categorize them into four. High kapag maganda yung sagot, medium, uh, medium high, medium low and low. So four types. Dito papasok yung norm reference kasi kung kumpara mo yung mga performance nila, mga responses ng bawat isa. Step 2. Step 3, start the grading. Always use a pencil on your first run through. Okay, kasi pwede magbago yung score nila kapag mag norm reference ka. Having a separated uh, having separated the papers into piles, high, medium, low, uh, not letter grades yet, do an initial read through and assign a preliminary holistic grade based upon a general impression of the work. So, magagay ka mo na initial score mo. 
dun sa work nila. Nung na-identify mo na yung high, medium, low, medium, high, and others. No, after putting the general impression, you have to reread each paper for how it addresses the criteria identified for the assignment. Meron ko yung criteria, now reread it now. Meron ko ng initial score, but you have to reread the, 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 the response, okay, vis-a-vis -vis the criteria you set. That's step three, grading. In step four, mark up the paper. So finally, after considering the criteria or the rubric, you now finally put a fi finality to the score you provided in the initial um, checking. Okay, so kaya ito yung sasabi natin na napakahirap mag-check kapag essay test. Okay, mahirap siyang gawin. Now, research shows that a number of factors can bias the grading of essay test. Ito mga factors. First, different scores may be assigned by different readers or by the same reader at the same at different times. Kaya nga, kapag mag-check ka ng ano, mag-check ka ng essay test, ng essay test sa mga sigyante mo, Huwag mo hatiin na sabi mo, oh, dahil picture ka naman, yung kapatid mo picture din. O oh, pakicheck naman itong kalahati, check ko itong kalahati. O kaya distribute mo sa mga estudyante na magagaling para i-check, no? Certainly magkakaiba yung scoring nila. Or, okay, ikaw lang ang taga-check, pero ginawa mo yung pag-check ng, ginawa yung pag-check na hindi isang upuan. Maraming upuan na ginawa mo. Magbabago yan. Your subjectivity certainly. Okay? Kasi nakadepende sa mood mo, nakadepende sa nakadepende sa ano mo, nakadepende sa sa panahon, okay? Yung score na ibibigay mo sa estudyante. Huwag kang mag-check kapag galit na galit ka sa estudyante, sa klase. Kasi certainly, mababa-baba yung score na ibibigay mo. Okay? So, dapat kapag mag-check ka ng essay, isang upuan lang sa lahat ng mga responses ng estudyante. Number two, a context effect may operate. For example, an essay preceded by a top quality essay receives lower marks than what preceded by a poor quality essay. Yan yung mga no, ginawa mo. Pag hindi mo classify na dati, pag ginawa mo yung parang bubunot ka lang. For example, yung unang-unang unang unang unang, unang, unang uh, chinet mo, eh, hindi maganda yung hindi maganda yung kanyang pagkakasagot. Yung susunod, ah, hindi, eh, hindi rin ito maganda. Ganun, ganun, ganun ka na lang. Hindi rin ito maganda. So, makaka-attect ko yung order din nung okay? Yung order din nung uh, papel na chinecheck mo. Okay? So, kaya nga napakahalaga na meron ko talaga criteria to make it more objective or to lessen the subjectivity. Number three, the higher the essay is in the stack of papers, the higher the score assigned. Okay? May mga gumagawa nun. Ah, dahil ito yung pinakauna sa papel, okay, mataas ang score ko, lalo pag wala ka rubric, okay, mataas ito yung bigay ko sa kanya. Tapos siya na lang reference ko sa mga ibang mga kasagutan. Okay? That is very subjective. Another, papers with strong answers to items appearing early in the test, and weaker answers later will be, will fare better than papers with the weaker answers appearing first. It's another one. Number two, scores and are influenced by the expectations that the reader has for the student's performance. Kapag in-expect mo na magaling tong bata na to, ganyan-ganyan, certainly, magiging, magiging mataas din yung score niya. Kasi you already have expected high to this student and you, you are no longer checking uh, his response or her response to the essay question. If the reader has high expectations, a higher score is assigned than if the reader has low expectation. If we have a good impression of the student, we tend to give him or her the benefit of the doubt. So that's, subject, that's being subjective. Number three, scores are influenced by the quality of handwriting, neatness, spelling, and grammar. Diba? Nakaka-apekto yung handwriting, neatness, spelling, and grammar. So better na ilagay mo na lang siya sa criteria or sa rubric mo kapag titignan mo yung kanilang handwriting, neatness, spelling, and grammar. So these are uh, these are the factors that may uh, that may influence the subjectivity of the teacher when it comes to checking a test, uh, uh, an essay response. Okay? Uh, so those are about essay construct. Can you turn on your camera, please, for clarificatory questions? Before I'll explain, okay? Uh, before I'll explain uh, your task, which will be open on Monday. Ano? On Tuesday na lang pala. Ano, not Tuesday, on Wednesday pala. Kasi Tuesday pala is holiday. So we'll open the task on Wednesday. Kasi sa Monday, may gagawin ko yung ibang task. Ay, tama ba? Ay, hindi. Mali-mali. Yung isang klase pala yun. Sorry, yung isang klase pala yun. Okay, sige. Any question? Naku, maliwanag na kina Erika. Baka madaling araw na. Okay, sige. Jamie, please. Sir, um, <laughs> medyo gusto ka lang pong itanong. Uh, is it okay po na magpa-exam ng 
Dere-derechong essay po. No. Yung puro no, essay. Sir. Yes, sir. Sa isang, sa isang, um, kunyari, sir, uh, exam po, di ba po, meron po yung multiple choice, ganyan po, tas application po yung next na part. Okay lang po ba na dere-derechong essay po yung i-exam dun sa next part? Ay, sa next part. Okay lang naman. Pero siyempre nakadepende sa number of items din. Kapag sobrang dami ng essay, hindi okay. Sir, eh, paano kung kunyari po eh, seven items yung essay tapos kulang na din po yung time ng student to answer the... There's a policy. That's why in the university, there's a policy on this. Ang maalala ko is dapat higher percentage ng objective test type kaysa sa sa essay. Kasi nga ang concern nga natin yung content validity. Ang issue natin sa essay kasi is content validity niya and at the same time reliability of the scoring. That's our issue. That's why in our policy, uh, higher percentage dapat sa objective test type kumpara kay essay test type, sa subjective test type. Meron ba kayong ganung exam na mas marami ang ano, ang porsyento ng essay? Sir, um, ayoko pa mag-talk. <laughs> okay, okay, ayoko pa na mag-talk. <laughs> Sige. Pero ideally, no, dapat konti lang si essay. Kasi ang question nga natin sa essay test, sa essay type of test ay yung kanyang content validity. It may not cover everything. Okay? Kaya minsan ako, kung nagpa-PSA ako sa exam, sa test, isa lang actually. Sa final exam ninyo, merong isa. Eh, pero hindi siya essay. It's a perf it's problem-based uh, type of, of type of subject, uh, subjective type of test. Yung ano, yung gagawa kayo ng TOS. Okay? That's subjective type of test. Okay? Yung gagawa kayo mismo ng TOS. Tapos magko-compute kayo, problem-solving. Kasi meron tayong, magkukompute tayo for finals, eh. meron tayong discriminating index, difficulty index, so we will compute. Okay, that's our last topic. After I'll discuss the other types of subjective test types. Okay, any more question? Thank you, sir. Uh -oh. Sa ako, pag napapatest pag napapa ako, lalo sa major, uh, mas marami pa rin, 60% ang objective type. Tapos, uh, ang ano, ang ang essay ay nasa 40% lang. Kahit sa graduate school, ganun kami sa graduate school. 60% din sa ano, 60% din sa objective test. Ay, sa graduate school ata hindi. Parang pwedeng essay lahat. Kasi depende yan sa ano, sa estudyante mo eh. So, because we already expect our graduate school to be to be good at uh, explaining their opinions, defending their, uh, defending their uh, reasoning skills, or defending their stand to a certain issue. Yes, Archie, any question? Wala. Okay. Uh, Casey, may question ka, Casey? Okay, wala naman. Oh, parang kinis-kinis na mukha ni Casey. No? Kinis-kinis na mukha ni Casey. Okay, sige. Andre? May tanong ka? Wala, sir. Wala. Marinela, may tanong ba? Wala po, sir. Okay, na Archie? Sir? Kailan, sir? kailan yung last na lumabas kayo, Nina Archie? Sir, yun yung nagpa-vax kami, sir. Ay, pa-vax. Yes, sir. Oh, pa-vaxing ka dyan. Uh, Nauna na pa-vaxing si, itawag niyan, si, uh, sino yun yung isa? Matangkad? Wala siya ngayon, si Kala, uh, Kalagi. Si, sino yun? Kaligiran, sir. Kaligiran. Sir, sir, mas una ako sa kanya, sir. Ha? Mas una ako sa kanya, sir. Ba't wala si Kaligiran ngayon? Sir, nakilafang. Nakilafang. O, oh, yan. Hilig nyo lumabas-labas pag nagpapot. <laughs> sige. Okay, sige. Any more question? O, sa map eh. Usually, hindi essay yan. Performance-based ang mga assessment sa map. Eh. Okay. Wala masyadong essay dyan. Magulat ka puro essay ang teacher mo. Tapos highly Sir, I believe Greg has something to say. Highly performance-based ang ano. Tapos highly performance-based ang subject. Tapos puro essay. No. Performance-based is another subjective type of test. Pero dapat hindi ano. Pag highly performance-based, eh, better to ask them of performance-based questions. Okay? Mukha may sasabihin nga si Erika eh. Ang dalam na naman si Erika. Iba si Erika, no? Parang nandito na tayo, nandun pa lang siya. Okay. 
Sir, ang hina. Ang hinang net ko. O kaya nga, o. Kaya nauhuli ka lagi. Okay. Nauhuli ka lagi. Sige, baka mamaya eh, baka mamaya tapos na ang dinner namin na ikaw nag-out ka pa rin sa conference room. Okay, sige. Any more question? No, no more? Okay, so allow me to explain yung task ninyo na i-open ko sa Monday. Okay? Yung task ninyo na i-open ko sa Monday. At triads ito ha, by Tris ulit. Okay? Um, you select your 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 uh, triads. Okay? You select your triads already. So allow me to share this screen. Sir, okay lang po ba kung same group doon po? Same same group saan? Doon yeah, po sa okay lang. Ganyan. No worries ha. Oh. Okay lang, okay lang. Basta make sure that everyone will contribute something ha. Yes okay. sir. Pwede kayong gumamit ng forum ulit to discuss para makita ko kung talagang nag-ano kayo, kung talagang nag-discuss kayo. You can make use of the forum again. Okay, saan yun? Construct the account. So this one, first you have to select two classmates to work with. So tatlo kayo, no? Two classmates to work with. So tatlo kayo, including you. Download this worksheet. There's a worksheet. Then you study the rubric. Ito, nandito yung rubric. Basahin na naman ninyo, ha? Ito ang rubric. Adherence to guidelines, 15 points. All guidelines are observed. You will be given a perfect 15. Okay? Next is alignment. All items are aligned with the learning outcome. That is 10 points. And grammar. All items are free from grammatical lapses. Okay? 5 points. Total, 30 points. Okay? So allow me to allow me to present the the, the worksheet para dati niyo nang makita. Nang ko ba si Lady worksheet. Okay. Feeling ko si Erika, nandun pa lang siya sa may LMS. Erika. <laughs> oh, pray talaga sa Herbert. Okay, sige. Okay. Allow me to share the entire screen. Okay, sige. Ito, nakikita na ninyo? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, dun sa ano, pag i-download ninyo, palitan na lang ninyo ng criteria para ito. Okay, nakalimutan ko. Okay. So this one. So you have to put your names here, of course. Then unit of study, you select a certain unit of study. Ah, uh, sa, sa, sa PE, ang piliin niyo unit of study, mga first part ng, for example, history, ganyan ha. Mga history ng sports, ganyan. Yung, yung hindi highly performance-based, okay? PE. Defed. Archie. Sir. Uh, yes, Archie. sir. Sa mga PE majors, ang piliin ninyo yung mga highly conceptual content ng inyong lesson. Okay? Huwag yung mga highly performance uh, based. Yung mga hindi kailangan ng demonstration. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Select a unit of study, then you devise a learning outcome for that unit of study. Make sure that your learning outcome has to be complex. Okay? Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Ngayon, out from the unit of study, gagawa kayo ng three-item question or essay question for each type. So you put the directions here, then the criteria for the extended response, then the questions. Okay. Then for restricted response, directions, rubric, it's either holistic or Analytic. Bahala kayo. Holistic or analytic. But I suggest para madalian kayo, you make use of holistic. You just have to provide a clear descriptor for each criteria. Okay? Then, three questions. May tanong dito sa worksheet? Yes. 
Sir, is that dyads, triads? So... Triads sa din. Kaya doon sa instruction natin kanina, you select two classmates to work with. Ah, sige, sir. Ikaw, plus yung two classmates, tatlo. Okay, may problema ba dun sa triads natin? May sumobra ba? Sir, may kulang sir, po. Sir, kulang po. May kulang. So, ibig sabihin, yung matatalino, yung sobrang talino, kasi matalino naman kayong lahat, yung sobrang matatalino, baka pwede na magdalawa na lang o magsolo. Okay lang ba yun? Magsasolo na daw po sa Andre, sir. Si Andre, magsasolo siya. Pati sir, si no. May kagrupo na ako, sir. Pati si Erika, magsasolo din. Erika, magsasolo ka. Sir, si Cindy daw, sir. Si Cindy, magsasolo din. Sir, sir, sir. sir. Akala ko, sir, magsasolo na ako kasi lagi ako naglalag. Ganyan, Erika. Mahina talaga internet sa Gadu, no? May na talaga ba internet? Yes, sir. Sabi? May na. Hmm, okay, sige. Yes, sir. Okay. Pag Zoom, sir, ganun. Pag mga video conference, sir. Ay, ganun. Eh, ba't kasi hindi ka nalang nag-stay kina Ma'am Alice? Sir, actually, ikaw, uwi ko lang po, sir, dito. Pag ah, pero kay Ma'am Alice ka talaga nag-stay. Eh, hindi, sir. Hindi din, sir. Tumasyal Sali. lang, sir. Ano, masyal ka sa Tugigraw? Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Tagal na. <laughs> okay, sige. Sige. Uh, Nakutwalya ba tong si, ano, si Andrew Kul, PJ? Sir, nagbibitch yan. Nakutwalya ba siya? Or ano? Akala ko tuwalya na nilagay lang na ganito. Sir, nakadyan. Okay, sorry naman. Akala ko tuwalya. Okay, sige. So, um, again, thank you so much for making yourself available today. Okay, I hope that I could be able to compute your grades already para malaman ninyo yung midterm grades ninyo. But yung ano pala, yung may question pala dun sa exam, talaga palang hindi, talaga palang automatic na ganun ang scoring niya. Kasi I tried to, I tried to look into the possibility of the scoring, lalo na dun sa mga multiple response, talagang ganun pala automatic ang scoring niya. Okay, so that will already be your final score. Okay, <laughs> but anyway, uh, generally naman, generally naman valid yung result. Valid yung result kasi mas marami ang pumasa kumpara sa bumagsak. Okay? Mas marami rin pa rin naman pumasa. Yun nga lang siguro nagulat kayo kasi yung matataas na score ninyo ng prelim exam, parang hindi siya ganun kataas ngayon sa midterm exam. Which is understandable because yung mga topics natin for midterms ay usually performance, highly performance based lahat. Tama? highly performance-based lahat, that you really have to apply your understanding of the concepts and theories. Okay lang naman iyon. Uh, kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, ano eh, um, uh, lalo na siguro yung mga naka-98 na grade. Mayroon mo naka-98 na grade, 95? Oo. Maraming ba? Okay, hindi ko maalala kung meron. Feeling ko si... O oh, yung mga ano pala, yung mga, yung mga exempted, okay, sa class record ko papalitan yung, ano, yung score ninyo, okay? Yung mga exempted. Sa class record ko, papalitan yung mga scores ninyo. Okay, then I, I hope that next week, uh, I'll be able to upload or indicate already your midterm grade para nang sagano mabigyan kayo ng ano, mabigyan kayo ng hint kung ano pa yung improve ninyo, kung kailangan yung mag-double effort, mag-triple effort, o mag-no effort for finals. Okay, to meet the, uh, to meet the, ano, to meet the um, um, retention grade. Required grade of 83. Ngayon, ang tanong ko kasi meron pa naman tayong time. Kumusta ang inyong requirement? Tandaan po ninyo, prelims ko pa binigay yun ha. First meeting, kumusta po? Honestly speaking, sir. <laughs> Wala pa pong nang simo. Wala pa pong nang simo. Wala pa? Sir. O sige, ganito. Kasi yan din ang requirement niyo later. Ang nangyari kasi dun sa last school year, I required it to my students ng assessment of learning one. Pero since sila pa rin ang estudyante ko ng assessment of learning, kuminove ko yung requirement. So that will already be requirement for assessment of learning two. Kasi ako pa rin naman ang teacher mo. Hello, ang perfect mo naman, sir. Hello, shit. <laughs> Thank you, sir. perfect mo ni sir. Hello, really? 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 H
Okay, so i-move na lang natin siya for assessment of learning too. Okay. Yes, thank you, sir. Sabi ko na nga lang, hindi nyo pa natin. So nakakahiya talaga sa inyo. Okay? Alam pa lang doon natatapos ni Jomel. Sir, finals sa second sem, sir. Oh, finals sa second sem. Basta dating sabihin, ha? Okay, so ibig sabihin, pwede nyo nang gawin yan. Pwede nyo nang gawin yan during break. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ay, hindi ko madaling blessings. Kung gusto nyo matapos na para ready na po. I actually have asked ma'am our dean kung ako pa rin ang teacher ninyo na assessment to. Ayaw ko na sana. Kasi parang na-miss ko na magturo ng... Hindi kasi na-miss ko magturo ng gen ed. Di ba history major ako? Okay, of course, I also would like to teach readings in Philippine history. Okay, pero sabi niya, hindi pwede kasi yung profile mo kailangan namin sa teacher ed. So sabi niya, assessment of learning to pa rin. Okay, sige, okay lang ma'am, kako naman. So assessment of learning to pa rin, ako pa rin teacher niyo. So pwede natin i-move yung requirements sa assessment of learning to. Okay? Kasi Ala, natin, thank you, Gapa, sir. Ako na ako na ako ni TJ, yung pet-pet na ni TJ dahil yes, dyan. Yes, sir. Okay. Nawa na ako dito sa pet-pet na ito. Thank you, sir. Ayan. Okay. Sige. Okay then, sige. So, may we now end our class with a closing prayer. And because I really miss the voice of um, Erica, okay, may we, may we request Erica to lead us the closing prayer. Erica, please. O, di ba ang tagal? Sorry ka na. Huwag ka mag-dots on. Teka, huwag ka mag-dots on. O, di ba ang tagal? Teka, I believe one minute pa kami maghihintay sa response mo, Beb. Okay, may we now request, ano, kasi nakakaya sa katinisan ng kutis ni Casey. Si Casey na lang ang mag-lead ng prayer natin. Sige, Casey, please. Bye. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We thank you, Lord, for al for allowing us to end this class successfully. Um, thank you for our mentors. thank you for our mentor Sir Herbert, who have shared his knowledge with us. Hello, sir. Nagdadasal na ako. Okay. Casey, continue mo na, Beb. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the prayer, Erika. Sabi sa inyo, eh. Anda, very epic. Anyway, thank you, Erika, for leading us the prayer. And also, thank you, Casey, for being always ready, no? Ready, ready na si Casey, eh. Okay. Pero dahil talagang challenge ang internet kina Erika. Okay. Mukhang... Mukhang ano, mukhang one minute. Yes, sorry, sir. Yeah, no problem. That's okay. And we love your prayer anyway. Your prayer is good. Okay? Thank you, Erica. Okay, so thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of this night. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Paul.